Another episode honing in on global breakfast. Boys, the first one is in front of you. Remove the blindfolds. Ooh. Oh, today's going to be a good day. Love these videos. But also humiliating because my geography is terrible. What we got? Lovely little buns. Yeah. Ready, although they feel... Ready but dense. It yeah. feels like there's something inside. Have a look at the shape of the top before you munch on it, because that might be useful oh, later. They've been brought it's together. Folded in, hasn't it? So there's got to be a filling. Oh, Are they cold? Sweet. Are they warm? <laughs> what? You've got one raisin. One raisin. Tastes like a a self internalised hot cross bun. It's a hot cross bun without the cross on the front, isn't it? Like in, in in the piping. Are they sweet? Are they savoury? They're warm. They're sweet. Oh. Mm. There's a citrusy filling inside. Feels like a version of a hot cross bun that I'm familiar with. So you've got the dried fruit in there, a little bit of honey, and those are the kind of flavours that might be steering you towards that. These are kind of delicious warm breakfast buns. I can tell you now they're filled with cheese. You definitely can't taste that. Cottage cheese, sugar, egg yolks and dried fruit all combined. And then that is put inside a blob of enriched, kind of slightly sweetened dough that, as you say, is then folded over. Now, as it kind of proves and then bakes, that cheese almost gets consumed into the bread and vice versa. You don't get a pocket of cottage cheese, but you get a wonderful, moist, succulent middle. I, I sometimes add cottage cheese to eggs. I like making scrambled eggs. It just, just provides that real fluffy airiness to it. While the guys are trying to decipher the first one, they're each going to try and guess where in the world this dish comes from. If they get the country spot on, they get three points. If they both get it wrong, then whoever is closest based on miles will get a single point. The winner won't only have had four delicious breakfasts, but will also leave with pride. Which is the most important thing. So this particular iteration of the dish is thought to be about 300 years old. As you can imagine, as a concept, it's travelled and it is popular in a number of countries, but we're honing in on one. Um, and lemon zest is a flavour we've given it. There's lots of recipes out there. But the cottage cheese, the egg yolks, the sugar and the dried fruit are common. I feel like I need a clue. <laughs> Have you got a clue? <laughs> so, the name of the dish comes from the visual similarity of that top cross, because it's supposed to look like the corners of a baker's apron tied up behind your back as those folded bits come in. And based on my limited understanding of this language, the name is Branzo Aiche. That's the clue I'm going to give you. All I need you to do is lock in an answer. Oh my gosh, I don't I even have a continent. No, I think it's really hard because it's, it's quite generic. There aren't strong flavours coming through that would lead you down a certain path. The limit, limited spices is normally yeah. something that I draw upon. One more clue. It's thought that these dough-based items were introduced by the Romans, but there's lots of iterations now, and this one is about 300 years old. You've both locked in an answer. Let's have a look in three, two, one. You're both hungry. What? What? <laughs> did we did just become best you? friends? <laughs> Why did you choose hungry? I was instantly taken to that part of the world in terms of uh, the prominent baking, like Polish, Hungarian, all of that sort of region have amazing baked goods. I just went with how I felt. <laughs> Excellent. Well, needless to say, you're both the same distance away. Oh, yeah. Just 416 oh, miles. Right. Okay. That's pretty good for us. We're talking Moldova. Ah. Oh. Okay, yeah. Ah, we got the region. I yeah. think that's a, I take that as a victory. I would take that as a win. <laughs> so the thing with Moldova is the national language is Romanian, which was the clue of the Romans and that kind of journey. Obviously, we're talking uh, kind of Eastern Europe. Of course, yeah. Bordered by Ukraine and Romania. It was quite a tough one because we say versions of these have now expanded and moved to other places. I bet they exist in Hungary. Bulgaria, Point. Serbia, Greece, and Turkey. However, as a breakfast item, these are iconic in Moldova and they're absolutely delicious. One point each for being equally close. I'll take that. Let's move on to round two. 
Number two, lift the blindfold. Ooh. Oh, Ooh. yes! That looks... This is breakfast. Is that mashed potato? I don't know. It and is. that mashed plantain or something with just butter yeah, in Yeah, but you know like when you cook like a roast chicken and you have all the juices at the bottom? Yeah. And you pour that. You can make a great gravy out of that. Yeah. Chuck us a spoon. Now we have given you a spoon, but it might not be needed. Are you supposed to use your hands? Maybe that's a clue to where. It's giving me my fungo. Mm. Cheers. Oh, whoa! It's so starchy and silky. <laughs> it's so <laughs> clever. <laughs> it's almost like a shoe dough. It is like a raw, slightly warmed up shoe dough that's not been cooked out. So it is wheat flour that has been beaten into boiling water. So in terms of shoe paste, you're right, except that's not cooked out and then it's baked. This is cooked out for a longer period of time and then it is served with butter, honey and a molasses. <laughs> I when just you... had a spoonful of that. I was like, I've just had a spoonful of butter. <laughs> it's just melted butter. <laughs> but when you have it with that, you're like, this is a deconstructed raw cake. <laughs> but it's delicious. So butter, honey, and date molasses are kind of serving suggestions. Why is it not cooked, Evers? Well, it is cooked, but it's cooked over a pan, so it's cooked in boiling water. You need to really, really work it hard. It's considered quite hard work and tricky to do. It's bloody delicious. <laughs> this, this is not good for you. It is a high energy, high carb dish. It's considered absolute fuel for the day. And traditional ones might be made from other grains, sorghum, red millet, corn perhaps, but most traditionally wheat, and that's what this one is. Once you get the honey and the molasses in, so you get the real sweet, sugary kick, it feels... Decadent. Yeah. It's an absolute treat. That's what it is. The name derives, I'm not going to give you the language this time, uh, and translates to twist it because you would literally have to continually twisting it in the pan as it cooks to make sure it's a smooth but also cook through so you're cooking out that wheat um, so yeah it kind of translates to twist it and this particular shape is uh, typical of the western part of this particular country because it feels like it's got the similar look texture and feel of uh, fufu from um, West Africa but obviously it's a completely different... It's flour. Yeah. Yeah. So the recipe is known to date back as far as the 10th century, where it appeared in a cookbook. And it goes back to pre-Islamic Bedouin tribes. There's the clue. I shall say no more. Lock in an answer. Where in the world? Which country is this from? You've both locked in an answer. Give us a flip. Three, two, one. Egypt. Afghanistan. Hmm. The difficulty I had is if the dish goes back that far, the countries that we know them as today aren't the same as the countries were back then. That's why I picked Egypt. I Which was thinking you knew has gone... Morocco, Tunisia, like more the North African yeah, yeah. areas. So the dish name is Asida, and it's an Arabic word. It's basically an Arabic bread flour pudding. And in particular, in this form for breakfast, with these accompaniments in that shape, we're talking Libya. Oh. Oh. So Mike is a lot closer with yeah. just 839 miles oh, wow. distance. And there are savoury versions all across North Africa. Yeah. Um, but specifically Western Libya, it is that dome shape with the caveat. The date molasses might have been part of a clue. The mention that sometimes and originally it might have been made with sorghum, it was traditionally from that part of the world as well. A challenging one, completely new to us. Again, what do you think of it? I mean, it tastes amazing. It's all of the things that you want to eat, but probably shouldn't eat every day. I mean, it tastes of so much. It tastes very fatty, buttery, sweet. The date molasses is actually, I mean, that's the thing that really lifts it. It tastes incredible. But then on top of that, you've got this ridiculously claggy but silky texture. Not easy to make, but absolutely wonderful. Mike, you take two points to Jamie's one. Let's move into round three. Great. I smell... Smells? Un something very distinctive, like... Mm -hmm. Pastry. You're using your nose well. You can now use your eyes. Blindfolds off. What? Oh, what? 
<laughs> it's phyllo hot dogs. Phyllo hot dogs. Phyllo hot dogs. This is carb on carb, a classic in the capital of this particular country. I mean, this has been the one that's made me go, what the yeah. most? Because this looks like something that you would do and pass it on. I'm glad you said that because we had exactly the same conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Which is this looks like something that Jamie goes, oh, that'll do. Let's find out what the fuss is about. I thought there might be something else to it, but it's just Frito pastry in a bread bun. Correct. <laughs> Okay, I feel like a key component was missing before I started slagging it off. <laughs> Most commonly accompanied by a yogurt drink to wash down what can otherwise sometimes be considered quite dry. That was my first thought was this yeah, is dry. It needs a dip is what I thought. Well, I'm not sure about a dip, but it's just, oh, too late. just a drink on the side. I'll tell you what, that mate. Is a that, that is a lactic yogurt, isn't it? That is delicious. That's the perfect amount of sour. Mm -hmm. And now we're in. The, the flavour is one thing, because it is buttery and doughy and that kind of thing, but it's the texture it's brilliant. that makes it unique. Traditionally, it would be a, a yeasted bun, and the yeast is actually made from crushed chickpeas, which is a very unique thing. Nowadays, it tends to be just a very easy, like a baker's bun, and in the morning, they just slice into it and they whack in the, the phyllo sort of pie crust, and it goes from there. The challenge is making the phyllo thin enough, almost translucent with enough butter and oil to make it go nice and crispy. And that gives you, as you've said, the texture. It actually is incredible how much everything's unlocked by that drink because yeah. it is slightly salty, but it's sour and creamy. It almost carries the whole flavor. And then afterwards, every bite, I get croissant vibes. Yes. Where on earth is this from? So hopefully there's a few clues in there, but not many. Other countries might also add cheese to the filling with this, but particularly the capital city of this country, it's just the plain phyllo crunch in a breakfast bun. Commit to one country and lock it in, and then we'll see if either of you get it right, and more importantly, which one's the closest if you don't. Answers scribbled? Yes. Give us a flash. Three, two, one. Croatia. Greece. Yeah, I thought, well, I thought about Croatia. Did you? I thought yeah. about Greece. Oh. So now we, technically, we had the right thoughts. We're both right. You're yeah. both in a definitely very similar part of the world, skewed by phyllo and probably by yogurt and yogurt drinks. Yeah. Mike, with just 408 miles away, was the closest guess until Jamie wrote Greece, which is just 175 miles away. <laughs> oh, Jamie know. takes the point. <laughs> Where is it? This is from North Macedonia. Oh. So Macedonia as a region includes part of Greece and Kosovo and Albania and Bulgaria, that whole area, but specifically in the capital of uh, North Macedonia. This dish called Simit Pogaccia is loved. Thanks. <laughs> Translates to loved or they just love it? They love it. They just love it, yeah. <clears throat> and Mike's guess of Croatia was not bad either because when we were in Croatia last year, we had a, a breakfast item bought from a shop, eaten out on the street, which was kind of boric, all that kind of lovely stuff, but with added cheese and eaten with a drink yogurt. So all very similar, the, the region of Macedonia, but we're talking North Macedonia as the country and it's specifically the capital city. What a bold move. Yeah, I mean, yeah, fair play because you did it, you <laughs> thought it, you did it, and then you made it work. Which puts you level pegging at two points each as we go into the final round. Uh, ooh, round four. Play, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Last one, all to play for. Blindfolds off. Can I please just have some eggs, please? <laughs> um, no. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I mean, that looks, that's an egg in there, isn't Is it? That... I have never tried this, and I didn't get a chance to try it before we lifted the cloche. I'm so intrigued. I don't it's... know what that smells of. It's warm. It smells like chowder. Chowder. Cheers. Oh, Very eggy. Onions. Onion. Lots of onions. Like crunchy onion. There's something else in there. Coriander. Correct. What's giving it the bouncy texture? I think it's all texture? egg. Do you think it's all, that can't, that's not egg. I think it's all egg. Do you think that, that that's a massive bowl of eggs? I think it's a big bowl of I eggs. I don't think that's all eggs. So basically it's diluted milk, i.e. milk and water, brought up to boil, seasoned, in goes spring onions and salt and pepper and sort of brought up to like a, a nice flavor. It's reduced down and then almost like egg drop soup. So eggs are added. Maybe some little cubes of cheese, and then it's poured over stale bread. Finished with fresh coriander, 
and it is that kind of way of using up yesterday's bread in an egg-based breakfast, sometimes called a, or considered a hangover cure in this country. Is it an egg sandwich with onion? <laughs> I'd say it's got a very neutral flavour. The main flavour is coming from the onions as you bite into them and the coriander on top. Yeah, and pepper, like the pepper yeah, you pepper. can taste throughout, Black which pepper. is really important. Which again, if you think of many breakfast dishes all over the world, from our own porridge to Chinese congee, they can be very neutral. It, it, like the egg gives it a very sort of gelatinous bite. The perfect way to warm up on a cold morning. No. Texture-wise, not hugely different from our own porridge. Uh, I'd say quite different. Yeah, I'd say quite different. Mm. Yeah, I'd say actually porridge has more of a texture. Like it's, it's still got a bite of the grains. Mm but within a sort of starchy, glossy liquid. It's said to have originated from the indigenous communities that lived in the highlands of this country and has since been passed down from mothers and grandmothers, generation to generation, and is occasionally still consumed in the capital city of this country. It just tastes like eggy, bready soup with onion. It's pretty much what it is. Yeah. And actually, it's another example of a very frugal dish using up yesterday's stale bread that wouldn't be much good for anything else. There's Thinking no about chance. the ingredients, yeah. milk, egg, bread, doesn't really narrow it down, but there are some clues in there. You've both locked in an answer. It's all to play for. Let's see. Three, two, one. Ecuador. Mongolia. Wow. Someone's really, really wrong. One of you is 8,880 <laughs> miles wrong, whilst the other person is only wrong by 517 <gasps> miles and will take today's win. Wow, that's really close. Why do you have Mongolia? Comparisons to things like egg drop soup, the simplicity of ingredients around milk, bread, eggs. Incredibly sound logic. What was yours, Mike? I must be miles away. I must be wrong because I forgot the cold clue. Yeah, but in the mountains. Yeah, so I thought, what's got coriander and mountains? Ecuador. <laughs> <laughs> I don't this know. This dish is called Changua. Damn! And is from Colombia. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking the Spanish language. Okay, excellent. I thought. <laughs> and it is the highlands of Colombia, particularly uh, loved in Bogota. Wow. Get in. Okay. Tribes, that was my other thing. Yeah. I'll be honest, out of those four rounds, it was probably the toughest to post-rationalise not knowing. But yeah, an absolute classic. Brilliant. Well, the fast has been broken. Mike takes the win. Three points to two. Thanks. Comment down below. How many of those did you get if you were playing along? And have you ever actually tried any of them yourself? And we want more. We want more breakfasts. Comment more below. Breakfasts.